23rd at 6 o'clock. Um, we, we do have a short agenda, but I think we are going to have much discussion. Um, the first thing we need to do for business is I need approval of the meeting agenda as submitted. I make a motion that we put the meeting agenda as submitted for this special ball meeting. And a second. Okay. And we have a second from Jennifer. So all those in favor of the motion of the meeting agenda as submitted, say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Um, the next item on the agenda is discussion of the process to select an interim superintendent. Um, it's an interesting process because there really is not a formal process. So we can make this as difficult as we want or we can make this as streamlined as we want. Um, I can say right now that I've had five uh, folks that are very interested in being, being interviewed um, and that was through uh, recommendations from uh, folks in the district and outside of the district. So our goal tonight is, is on this and, and we have to remember an interim superintendent is not a babysitter. I mean, we have business. We, we have things that have to take place. And, and we have to be able to process all this just like we normally have. Um, we are very fortunate that the applicants so far, that, that wish to be applicants, all have been superintendents, all but one. And the other one was a, a, an assistant superintendent. So, um, my main thing is, and I want you all to now, and I'll stop talking here in a second. The needs of the district don't stop. The idea of community and communication doesn't stop. The, the idea of paying our bills does not stop. Everything that we do today, we have to do tomorrow. And you just, we can't have somebody in there who we don't feel comfortable with because we don't want a babysitter. Um, and unfortunately, there are some that that happens. Um, so, I guess what I really want to get from you all before we jump into maybe trying to set a meeting date, and if we have five at this point, we may have to do this over two meetings to, to give everybody a fair fair share as far as being able to chat and us too. So uh, Jennifer, what are your ideas? Um, well, I mean, you mentioned making it, you know, it could be difficult or streamlined. I, I'd really rather make it thorough um, so that we're making sure we need the right person. Right? Right. So that's important too. Um, I generally would like to have an interim, I think. I think that would be a good idea. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we would want to get one sooner than later. And it seems like from the emails that the board has received this uh, over the last couple of days, it seems like all of the leaders in the district have, well, most of the leaders in the district have indicated that there's one person that they've worked with previously that would be a good candidate. So I would like to um, throw some weight behind the professionals who are on the ground doing the work. And, and that person is obviously one that's that's interested mm -hmm, um, sure. too. Um, how are we receiving these uh, applications or resumes, or how do we have these five names? Well, what what where I left it at this point, since we really I, and I told him we were to determine the, mm -hmm. the, the the direction of this, mm -hmm. is that I'm hoping we can establish next week before we get into spring, uh, fall break, that we can establish a couple of days that we can at least start doing the interviews. Mm -hmm. But prior to that, we need to make a formal request that they send us a resume, that each candidate would send us a resume. And I'm going to have those resumes directed to Vince. And then Vince will distribute those to the board members as we need them. Okay? Is that, is that agreeable, everybody? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I think the fact that the folks that I've been uh, briefly in contact with um, 
Monday and Tuesday seems to be the best days. And I don't know where we are. I knew we had talked about Monday. Um, so Wade, where, where would you be on being able to do both evenings? Monday, Tuesday, sir. From Wednesday, I'm on my house. Right. Well, that seemed to sort of be the, even with these folks, sort of be the, the story. So what about you all? Uh, Monday or Tuesdays? Yeah. Or maybe both, is what you're saying. It probably will be both. Okay. Um, because, I mean, it's just like you just, we, we just need to, this is a, this is really a big deal. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're essentially hiring a superintendent. Mm -hmm. So, and that's my concern. So are we going to um, post this? I mean, I know it's in the newspaper and stuff, but are we going to post this online so that, or on the newspaper, just trying to get, how we're going to get these resumes in 3A? Well, I'm going to be, I will call them tonight okay. to verify that, that we do want their resumes. Um, I, I'm not sure that how many more we want. Um, and really, there, it's, it's kind of a limited pool. Um, some, some, some retired superintendents are okay with this, but a lot of them, once they're retired, they're retired. So, mm -hmm. or they're involved in other things. Um, so I'm, I'm thinking at this point, why don't we stick with the five, and if I get another inquiry, then we'll, you tell me what the limit is. I guess I'll bring me for Emma Monday and Tuesday. Yeah. I think five will be the starting point. Mm -hmm. okay. It wouldn't overload us. To give us a good cross section of what we need for the district on this limited basis. Okay. But I think if, if there's someone that comes in that looks like they'd be a plausible candidate, sure. That would be good sure. to know. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm asking about, like public wise. I mean, I want to make sure that I, we get the best candidates. And so I'm just wondering, you know, I mean, I know that it's, we're a small town and people, the information's out there, but mm -hmm. I just want to make sure we get as many great candidates as possible. Mm -hmm. We can always start with the five, yeah. and if there's not an, um, a candidate within the five that we feel comfortable with, that doesn't, that doesn't end it. I mean, we can always, if we have to go beyond the fall break, we just do, but we can start with them, and that may be what we need is in that five. So, and then like I said, if not, I mean, we're not cut to that, so we can, I think then we can move forward at that point. And then realizing our goal is we need somebody on board October the 10th. Correct. Mm -hmm. So um, that doesn't leave a lot of time. You know, it's kind of like herding cats, trying to get everybody together yeah. at these times can, can be uh, uh, pretty interesting. So um, what are some of the attributes or, or things that you all would want to look at or be specific about uh, interviewing a, a candidate for this? Do, do you all have anything in mind at this point? Well, I mean, it would, be, it would be helpful to someone who's familiar with the district, I think, and mm -hmm. is aware of the community and community needs. Someone who has um, small, school, small district experience mm -hmm. as well as uh, a caring attribute uh, about um, uh, some rich traditions and can honor that. Too. Right. I agree. I was kind of, you know, I think too that we, we meet a person that can not only blend and, and <clears throat> be up and running, mm -hmm. but we also know we're in a healing situation and we need someone that because we're, we're looking at possibly this could be nine months um, generally the the superintendent pool starts coming available late December or, or mid-December all the way through to the end of the school year which is June 30 so and I think that's something we need to realize is that this won't be like three weeks and it's, it's going to be we, I think we need that yeah yeah, so I mean, it, it's 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 an assignment. Sometimes, sometimes we pick them also they can get the ground running because, like you say, the district still has to function and they are still responsible and duties to be performed. So we have to look at somebody who's capable of doing that. 
blending and moving. Mm -hmm. Mr. Becker, is it, is it a possibility to ask the administrators that are in our audience what their thoughts are on what characteristics they would like? Is that allowed? Um, I think we can. Sure. It's all, we can segue to that very easily. And so I, I know some of y'all have written us, mm -hmm. uh, but any other comments from you guys? Um, I think I agree 100% that it needs to be somebody who definitely has that small, independent, if possible, district experience. Um, I heard you say four with superintendent experience, one with assistant superintendent, and I think I can do this because it involves me. Let me clear the air in the room that that assistant superintendent is not me. <laughs> no, well, I feel like that needs to be said. No, and I'm glad because uh, we're in a situation where I can't bring up names. Right, so, but I can bring up my uh, own name. You can. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Thank you. For I can. Yeah, thank you um, for Because I've also seen some of the communication that has come through that it's hopeful it's not me. And so let me go ahead and clear that air that that assistant superintendent in those five, it's not me. Okay. Well, and I appreciate you. I have made my recommendation to the board. Yes. And I think all of you read it and saw it, and I appreciate your response. Um, I also believe that they need to be familiar with our district, but maybe not be too entrenched in our district, if that makes familiar, sense. Familiar, but not familiar. Correct, right. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And I think the individual that a lot of us have already recommended is a good good blend of those things. So that's where I stand with it. Okay. Anybody else? Good time to chime in. Okay. Um, let's get down to the <laughs> Chad, do you? I'm just, I, I just uh, I'm three months in. I, I trust uh, I trust you all. Um, and and, and Miss Satterley is is her, her recommendation is, is someone that we, we feel strongly about and that we we think would do a good job. Um, you all have a good idea of it. Um, I just we, I really want somebody that comes in and, and starts that the the healing process and allows us to kind of start moving forward and 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 supports us right off the bat because you know we, we we're ready we're ready to move forward we have some amazing students and some amazing teachers and we want to we want to get behind those kids and, and provide them everything that they possibly can get from us and I totally agree with that because I would say that um, uh, we have seen a momentum shift and so uh, we, we are headed in the right direction and what we don't want to do is backtrack and so I hear you loud and clear is that uh, Looking at this individual, we want somebody that can um, pick up that ball. I'm sorry, this is who I am. I pick up <laughs> the ball and, and, and you know, and, and let's keep us moving in a, a We a love winning, sports analogies. Right, so, you know, that winning trajectory is what we want to continue. <laughs> yeah. you know, we, don't, we don't want to go backwards. And so, I get it. I mean, I do. I hear exactly what you're saying. So, just me. Something I put in my recommendation to the board also that I haven't heard mentioned yet is I think it's important that it, this is a true interim and not somebody who's interested in Oh, absolutely. Board. Well, and, and that was going to be the next question to, mm -hmm. to everyone. Mm -hmm. there, there are situations where interims are also allowed to apply for the superintendent's job. And, and I think that we need to be very clear about that from the very beginning. And so I'd really like to... I would definitely move that the interim is not a person who's going to apply for the position. I would say it. Okay. Okay. And I just would like to add all of the things that you all said up there are, are spot on as far as attributes that I would like to see. But in addition, just someone who can actually mentor each of us as directors, because many of us, have, you know, we're, we're only three years or less in, and so we're learning as well. Principals also, not just directors, but principals also. I also would say I agree with what Ms. Pusateri said about thorough, but as quickly as possible, just because we need somebody. Um, but thorough is a good word for it. Well, and, and that, that's something that uh, we will be, just to make sure. I mean, I think you can, you can do the interview, but you don't have to make a decision, you know, Monday or Tuesday, but we will need to make the decision. Quickly. Yeah. So, so <laughs> that's where my concern has been, because I've been. That's why I was asking questions. Like, how do we? I just want to make sure that the applicants we get are the are great, 
and then we can go from there because I don't want to just throw somebody in, like, you know, and just good luck. We'll, <laughs> you we'll know, find that out, though. <laughs> in the interview process, we'll find, we'll find all that out. And, you know, this I think also this person needs to be a strong public communicator. I mean, mm -hmm. somebody who can can not only, you know, speak with our staff and our students, but somebody who can go beyond that and, and have that outreach to our community. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and be able to just kind of have that dialogue. Um, and so I, I think that's critical as well. So, and that's what we're going to be looking for. Somebody who can do that. Yeah, I got a call and a recommendation <laughs> from a fellow that uh, is in western Kentucky called me this morning, actually texted me at 7 o'clock. I, I don't know what time it was there. But obviously he's an early riser, and I am too. And he was, I chatted with him, and he sent me the name, and, and he said, um, you know, everybody's aware that Dr. McDonald has resigned, and she's moving on to Franklin, and everybody wishes her the best and, and uh, realizes this is an awkward situation. Um, but this, this, doesn't, this is not unusual totally. There, there was recently a superintendent that left to go to another district as a superintendent that had three years on their contract. So, I mean, it's not like this is a new world. Uh, it's a new world for Danville. And in the years that I've been involved in this district and living here in 30 years, I don't recall we ever had an interim. And, and I could be wrong on that, but I, I don't think so. Vince and I were talking about that. Uh, yesterday, and at least in our ten years, there's never, there's not been an interim. Do, do any of you all? I mean, Patrick, you've been around for a long time. I, I don't remember one. I can. I mean, we've got the list on the wall behind me. I was looking at it the other night, and I remember. Sadly, I guess I'm getting older, but a lot of these folks uh, going back as far as I think Don Turner, and I don't remember who was before him. But the, every one of those, there was a. There might have been a period of transition, but there was there was not a need for an interim because we didn't have quite the abrupt situation. <clears throat> I'm interested. I take it these applications must have come in quick after Tuesday night. They will. Okay. They will. Um, in fact, I'm I'm thinking we probably will receive them tomorrow. And, uh, He's right though. The phone call. I mean, we yeah. started right yeah, away. Absolutely. I, it, it's got a few headlines, so, and it is what it is. Correct. Um, I'm just of the point that uh, for all of us involved, including everyone in this room and all of our 325 or so employees and our families and our kids, that, uh, that this this is kind of a new world for our district, but it's it's one that we can manage and it's one that I feel like we can get a really good qualified superintendent. The, the, of these five, they're all qualified. Um, and for them to retire and then basically say I'll go back to work for nine months uh, says a lot. And, and their interest in kids is, is just like ours. It's, that's the number one priority. So I, I was really happy where we are at this point. Um, I will forward all this to Vince, and then if some, something else or whatever over the weekend comes up that there may be a couple more, then we'll make sure you guys know, okay? Um, realizing that, um, to, to let you know the possible cost, generally, the, the salary is 500 a day, and it could be more because there will be benefits involved and possibly there will be travel expenses. Um, it's not unusual that it could be, with everything, $700 a day. So um, that seems like an exorbitant amount of money, but it's, it's what it is. <coughs> and, and I think to get a quality person in here who's willing to take the bumps uh, along with the job, as they all know, um, you know, you, you make that effort to make sure we're going to accommodate the salary. Um, that's another thing that was brought up 
there are some districts that have done these contracts on a daily basis, which is interesting. Um, reason being is that um, maybe three months from now, there's all of a sudden there's not a comfort level, and it can give you some options. Um, I'm not saying I'm for that, but it is something that we can talk about. Uh, I think if you can offer a contract that basically says your contract will end the day that the new superintendent would start, probably would be more strong to, to say to that person, we're going to need you at least nine months, than to say, we're going to, we could boot you tomorrow. Um, that's just not cool. But I'm just, I wanted to bring it up because it's, it's a thing that's been going on in some districts. Okay, I'm looking for some thoughts about Monday and Tuesday on timelines. When would be the earliest that we could start on either one of those days? I mean, generally we, we always start at 6. Can, can we start at 5.30 or can we start at 5? Can we, do we need to stick with 6? Stick with 6 because of this drive. I mean, I Right. Yeah, then I do. Barely get no, and that's fine. That's, that's why I'm bringing it up. I'm bringing it up. Thank you, Mr. Ball. <laughs> <laughs> that's something that Mr. Stampin wanted everybody to know. Uh, but, Just call me, Mike. <laughs> so, I keep trying to turn it up. Just, you know, just throw it on the ground. <laughs> it's not a problem. Um, so both both days, Monday and Tuesday, we, we would start at six. Okay. Yes. We will have the meetings here. The um, as we did with board applicants, those, those interviews are are in executive session um, to let Olivia know that. There won't be a decision made, I don't think. I know Monday night there won't be a decision made. I don't know where we'll be on Tuesday. But if there is a decision made, then we have to come out of the executive session, do a formal vote on whoever the candidate would be. So, but, but I, I don't know if we're there. I don't even know if we're close to there. So, um, okay, other comments before we... I guess what I want or would like also to get is, is, is um, any concerns about this transition? Make it as smooth as possible, it would be thorough. Okay. And you're talking specifically about the transition to an interim? Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, I do have some concerns with the people that have left central office and this person essentially is walking into an office with multiple holes. So how will we help them and support in that way? Like how well, I, think, yeah. I think that is critical in the person that we hire. Mm -hmm. Because if we hire the right person, mm -hmm. uh, those holes won't bother them. I mean they'll they'll at least have a plan uh, to get to you know to fill them because that's personnel and it really have anything to do with us. Sure. So we'll have to hire that person and we will just have to make sure that the person that we put in that seat can take care of, you know, those voids. Yeah. Um, you know, and maybe with, you know, just some guidance and some, you know, from us, but for as the process, I mean, we won't have anything to do with that. No, the, I, I foresee that the, the, the interim would inform the board that yes, we need this person and yes, we need that person. And, well, I guess that's not no. what I'm asking. I, what I'm saying is I think it's important that we convey to the candidates. Oh, absolutely. That, like, just so you know. Yeah. You're walking <laughs> in and there, there are several people missing from your central office. Yeah. So yeah. that's, that's it, my it, concern. I think you'll be astounded by how much they know. <laughs> I was. It was like, whoa. Wow. So, uh, did you grow up in the neighborhood around here or what? So, but, uh, but that's good though, because at, le at least the inquiry was made. They knew that their name's going to be um, 
they were going to be part of an interview process and they've taken some time to research. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's that's really a good thing. So they come in knowing claims, not, right. not, but, not, not in the void process. But Jennifer's correct, though. We, we need to, yeah. to to be upfront with that and right. then let them know that there are some folks that are that are leaving or have left and mm -hmm. that kind of thing. So, um, yeah. Esther, do you have anything particular? No, I, just, I just don't want anybody else to leave. <laughs> That's what my concerns are. It's just I want everyone, I mean, we're here for the kids, and I just want to make sure that you guys know that we're here for you as well. And, like, we hear you. We're, we're listening, actively listening, I promise you, you know. And I just, I, I just, I hate to lose all of these people, and I really just want stability for these children, and it just, I, we're here for you, like I promise. Like we're, we're listening. I just, like it, it. I know that we have children here in our, the school system, so like we are taking it real personal. And I know it's not a personal issue. I just, like I just want you to know that, like we hear you. We really do care. Well, I think we, as a whole, can assure you that that's what we want to. Yes. A lot of us have students in the district too, and mm -hmm. we yeah, and we appreciate that from you all, and we want the same things you want. I don't want to speak for anybody, but I see a lot of head nods, so. Yeah. Well, my children all went through, and I have a nephew still here. Um, and then I have about 1,800 other kids. Me too. That I yeah. care about deeply. Um, and it just, just makes a big difference in, in my perspective on things, is that it's all the kids, yeah. and it's all of our staff. And, and maybe we don't say it often enough, uh, and I apologize if I haven't, uh, but there is a deep caring from me, and I'm sure the rest of these folks, uh, about you. And I know it's, this has been extremely hard. <clears throat> There's been a lot of things said um, that we also hold to the interim superintendent that they know a lot of things going on. I was really disappointed in folks that, on the things that were said after mm. Dr. McDonald resigned. I thought it was shameful. And that disturbed me to see some of these awful remarks. And it's just not called for. I had a friend of mine that was in Georgia that's very aware of the damp and says, well, what do they want? She, she has resigned and she's moving on and she's doing the betterment for her family and yet we, there's still a group out there just chastising her and it's just not needed. We are not going to move forward until that stops. And I, I can't convey that any more clearly. You're either for us or you're against us. And being for us doesn't mean you have to accept everything. But it means that in your heart that you believe in these schools and our children and our staff and even this board. I know there's people here in this room that have really doubted us. Um, sorry for that heartache. But there, we do play different roles and, and it's hard to figure out what our role may be at times. But it's time for us to tell an interim, and it's time for us to tell a permanent superintendent that we're moving on, and we need the community to move on too. Uh, and I, I just, it has to be said. So, uh, Wade, I just want to make sure that six o'clock works for you. I mean, I do that Louisville drive quite often. So, so you know, if you get in the far left-hand lane on 64, <laughs> you can fly through there. He does. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a look. But I just, I just, just, I tell you, we do that. Yeah. Hey, that's true. We, with the aeronautics program, maybe we can put some wings yeah, on it. I think we're on number four. I think we're on number four. So any, anything else from the board yeah. 
on that. I will, if you all will allow me, I will get the schedule together. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll talk to each of the candidates and make sure we get their uh, resumes in. We'll get those to you um, so that we're aware of who these folks are before we jump in. And or I should say, Vince is going to get those to you. Um, so, Monday at 6, we'll be here. Tuesday at 6, we'll be here. Um, I'm hoping we don't have to get into a third day. I don't think we will. Uh, but to all the board here, just remember, they, they could be long evenings. So, Mr. Paul, do we need to bring brownies? No. No. Okay. No. All right. No. Okay. So let's move on to number four. Um, there are two main organizations that do superintendent search. School Board Association has been doing it for years and years and years. And then the Kentucky Association of School Administrators also does superintendent search. Um, I felt like that we probably should get presentations from both. And those presentations would be at a public meeting and would be in public. Um, we have board meetings coming up on the 10th and the 17th. Are the uh, 11th and 18th, I'm pretty sure. Yes. And I, I, I feel 100% confident that whatever day we pick, that they'll have a representative here. So um, <clears throat> the first meeting would be our, our generally our work session, mm -hmm. which would really be the ideal. That's what I would was, I was suggest, doing it on the work session. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I, I, I suspect that these presentations, I'm going to ask them to try to limit it to 20 minutes, but sometimes, it, as you know, and, and a lot of that will come down to what kind of questions we ask. Um, well, if you give them a time frame, you know, they, they, they can work around it. They go over the goal, but at least you give them right. um, a, a time frame. Okay. So we're, we're, we're looking at October the 11th, which we would have the, um, you know what, for some reason I'm thinking that meeting is scheduled at one of the schools, according to our. Uh, yeah. I think you. I think you're right. Susan. Yeah, I think the work sessions from here on out are in the schools, aren't they? Yes, and and if we move, generally in the work sessions we don't take comments anyways, but if we move the meeting, it then becomes a special call meeting, and then we are very limited. I mean, we still would have our agenda, but it would be a matter that we couldn't add to the agenda if we needed to. Mm -hmm. So. Ms. Farmer said it is at Hodson. Ms. Farmer, are you good with us being there? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so everybody aware of that? Mm -hmm. How is it? Okay. And then do you think we'll just be in the, the um, cafeteria? Our flex room is actually a little more conducive. Okay. Than, um, probably for like sound and presentations, but we can do either. Well, it's, it's up to you. It's, it's, your, it's your building. Our flex room, I don't, I don't know. We'll figure it out. Flex yeah. room or... Do I have to say right <coughs> no, you don't. And, and just as long, as long as we keep the meeting site okay. at the school, then we don't have to designate it as a special call meeting. Okay. And of course, there a mask would be required. Um, just the typical in the district at this mm -hmm. point. Okay. So everybody's aware. October the 11th, yeah. we'll be at Hogsett, and then Miss Farmer will be at the door to direct us wherever we need to go. Okay. So, <laughs> we'll know before. So I guess on the, the superintendent search, um, are there questions you guys have about what these search firms do? Well, I'm sure we'll for the work sessions, I'll present and tell us exactly what the project looks like and all of that. And you can, and you can look them up. I mean, yeah. you can yeah. look up KASA, they have a our website, you get that's a plethora of information mm -hmm. as well as KSBA. So, mm -hmm. before you come, and from, you can take a few minutes to kind of well, familiarize yourself with them. Yeah. This site. And those of us who've been through this process before, it, it's all it's all mandated. I mean, it's I mean, a district, if they want, can do it on their own, but as far as how it takes place and who's required to be on the selection committee, that is all state mandated. Mm -hmm. So there's really not much difference 
that's going to happen. They're, they're going to be basically drawing from the same pool of folks. Um, so it just comes down to who you're most comfortable with. So um, I know one thing that's been brought up several times to me is about when, when would you start the search? Um, it's too early now. It just is. I mean, superintendents or those who want to be superintendents generally don't make that decision. I think I mentioned before until mid-December and possibly into the um, 22 school year. You know what I'm saying? I mean, mm -hmm. in December on. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm thinking that that would be the guidance that we'll get from whoever it is. So, and, and I don't remember all the spots. I know some of y'all have were on the selection committee, but it's the principals and uh, keep, there's some community people. There's it's a certified employee. Certified, yeah, classified, employee. classified. They're going to give us all of that, right? Yeah, it's it's all, they're going to direct us. It'll, it'll all be listed, and then we'll make sure that we get that out. And, you know, just to let y'all know, they do not hire the superintendent. All they do is yes. provide to us the means to a get selection. to a, of a selection and. We do have the option that if they present four candidates to us and we go through that list and we want to interview someone else, we can do that. Okay. We, have so we have a lot of latitude on that, okay. right. just, just to let you know. Um, anything else on the selection? If, if we cannot get the organizations there on the 11th, uh, we may be moving into the 18th, but is that? Yeah. Thank yeah. you all. Yeah. I'm going to get them in here. And then we, we would have them, after our regular business items, we would have them. Uh, Make that Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Mr. Becker. Yes. Ms. Grubbs has on my notes to take a motion in a second on that date. And I don't know, in a vote on the October 11th date. As far as having the. Um, the presentations, yes. I don't know. I have a space. I have a space for a motion and second, and I don't typically like to tell Ray and I didn't do what she asked me to do. <laughs> so. Well, I mean, we, I mean, we we can we normally wouldn't do a motion on that. Okay. I mean, okay. seriously. I just want to yeah. make sure. Um, I mean, right. we. Yeah. No, I don't think you need to. Have a motion. Okay. You're setting something on the agenda. Okay. Yeah. I'm just. Yeah. I was handed the paper and. That's okay. Do this. I, and I understand. I understand. <laughs> but tell Ray and you can blame it. So Steve okay. told me. I got you. So, and that's fine. Um, okay, anything else that you all want to talk about at this point as far as the uh, superintendent search and interim search? Okay. All right. So let's go to item five, which is adjournment. We need a motion, please. I'd like to offer a motion of adjournment of the special call meeting. Second. So we have motion for the first and the second so all those in favor of the motion to adjourn the meeting say aye aye, aye. all those opposed that's what there are none we are adjourned thank you thank you, thank you.